Hi, Ahmad. How are you? Hello, Shams. How was your day? Good. How are you? I'm good. Today was um, a great day for me. Good. Do you, do you want to, when we finish this one about the shiny, are you interested in shiny book club? Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to study in it uh, already. Uh, ah, but nice. I can't like uh, go the book, to the book club itself because it's uh, very late. Uh -huh. So yeah, I'm interested. So we could like uh, have another cohort. Okay. Okay, nice. Okay, so let me share my screen. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this chapter is called iteration. And I was using like um the previous um I don't know if this previous uh um a note or because in this note for this chapter I haven't seen a full loop and there are learning objectives here, like they are saying about, you know, for loop and we'll say about the chapter doesn't contain any for loop at, at the end. They are just using like um built in uh, function in R that they take care of the for loop, such as far and other. So, so um, from the name iteration, uh, the main M is allow us to remove such kind of uh, redundant code to duplication and uh, we can use um, iteration. So let's see an example. Um, so given a data frame here, we can see we have A, B, C, D, right? And it turns out that we want to find the mean of this column of the and this and this, right? And one way to do that median is to do this, right? It's just to summarize and, you know, um, take N, um, you know, which is this. So this N take, tell us how much we have, um, then this median give you the median of this, right? But we can see here is just the duplication, right? And this actually break the rules. So um, neighbor copy and paste more than twice, right? So here we have more than twice of median. Then if you have more than twice of something, then the idea is just, um, you know, uh, change it to become like a uh, iteration of something for loop. Then the solution they propose is um, using something called across. Um, which will take care of this. And um, yep, so this is what we're gonna see. There are two uh, two things that we will talk about like across and um, many arguments with it. So still looking at this, uh, our data frame, um, we have a data frame, but uh, here we can see we do some grouping. Um, so the across functions uh, is a function that allows you to do some certain things across columns right across columns. So what it need to do is, I think, let's see this across. Um, so that we can get it is argument. I'm gonna need to do this. Yep. So we can see like the columns you specify, um, you know, um, the columns you want to work on, the functions, you need to provide the function you want. And you know, even we have something names, you need to provide something. So we see a bit of what this means. So here, for example, the, the previous example, we can call this one um, DF and group by and summarize, and we call across. Then the first thing you see, we say the columns we want to do, which everything. Here, everything means you know um, all the columns. Uh, these are some of the selection we already know from Dplyr. Some of the, those things. Um, and then the median, the function. So we can see here, this allow us to provide the function. So this takes everything and now apply it to all the columns. So we can see this one summarize everything. Um, yes. Um, Mike, you want to talk, add anything regarding this? No, no, very straightforward. Okay. So um, we can see here, not grouping columns, group here are not included in across because they are automatically preserved. So you can see here, we do group right? We group this stuff, right? And then we call the summarize. So uh, we don't, we didn't call the across within the group uh, because they are already preserved. So somebody may say, okay, um, we can see here, we already have, for example, A, 
you know, um, B. So here we group everything like for A, you can see the A, what is the um, median for uh, two, what is the median? So yeah, so these function that we have, um, other thing that can comes, you know, um, across the selection, for example, this column. So here we say medium, but you can do many other things. So for example, here we can say where allows you to select column based on their type. Here we say everything column. So we can see where the column is numeric, where the column is character, where it is date, all this allow you to select columns. So this is something that um, in deploy that allow you to do selections, but this one select everything. Um, so calling a single function, right? So here you can see we call a single function, right? Um, median. So let's look at what this mean, this section called calling a single function. Uh, the second argument to across define how each column will be transformed, right? Because here I define how each column will be transformed like medium. Uh, in simple cases, uh, the above, this will be a single existing function, which we already saw. This is uh, a pretty special feature of R where we are fast and median uh, to this and whatsoever. So what they are trying to say here is that uh, when we are passing the function to do that, um, the across will call this function to act on everything. So it's not possible for us now here to put to put this so you can see media. You just put median without open braces. Um, by, but this one, if you run this one, will give us an answer uh, because this is function itself. But um, across will call this median function and now um, uh, and now create this. So this is what they are trying to tell us. It is important to note that we are passing this function to across. So across can call it. We are not calling it ourselves. That means the function name should never be followed by this. If you have you forgot, you will get an error. So this is what they mean. Um, yep. Yeah. So, uh, but also, um, we saw the other one here. We are just calling in our own function, for example, median here where we have this. But also, sometimes it's pretty good. You can you need to do more things. You need to pass many other things. So you can see here we pass the columns A to D, right? But we want to pass, for example, um, say uh, let's. This is just an an, an example that uh, motivates this idea. So this is it. Oh no no, where am I? Okay. Oh yeah. So this is the example. Okay. Um, so that's what we saw, um, you know, single column, right? Um, what we have, but what about if we're gonna have, um, um, okay, yeah, this is a single column. This is a single function. We have a single function. What about if you wanna call multiple functions? So um, this, this is an example that motivates this problem. Uh, so at them, we want to calculate, um, you know, the uh, median in this data. So let's look at it. What happened is that uh, there is missing value in this data. There is some NA. Uh, we can see we introduce a replicate NA in the data. And we know like if we take a medium with NA, it will turn NA, 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 right? So across here, this is select the columns and calculate the median. But in the data set where you have, um, you know, okay, let me, so this, um, when we run this guy, we can see there is an A, an A right here in this column. So what happened is um, if there is an A, um, we know that uh, the median or when we call this guy, median will return an A. So because the median, if there is actually one A, it will return an A, an A. So we have this. Now, what we are saying is that, can we modify a single function here to accommodate some other stuff? Yes. So we're gonna do something like this, um, create a function. We can see that function median, then we said X, NA, remove NA. So this allow us to, you know, to do that. So you can see all oh, this one is a single function, right? Um, yeah, so, but- um, Do um, have a name? Yes. No, no, nameless, um, it's called, um uh, what do you call it um anonymous function yeah anonymous function so but um r comes with a better way to call this anonymous function so here we can see the some stuff but here instead for us to call it function a's um so r bring this you know it, it means anonymous function um that make it simpler that we just call this one 
So this is still the same thing, but uh, we're just using the format for um, anonymous function. But here we use um, explicitly the word function to just calculate that. So across here, we can see still take one function, right? Um, but what about how many, um, uh, we want it to take uh, multiple functions. Um, then you can wrap, wrap that thing into a list. So um, you can see here, for example, we want to calculate the median, but we want to see where do we have that missing values, right? So that you see here, we're going to see, okay, this is a column, but instead for us to pass a single function, we are passing a list, list with functions, right? List with functions. So we have median, we have enemies. This is a function for the median. Um, this is a function that calculates where is any. So here you can see uh, n is one number of means, you know, so all these things. So that's uh, um, across with um, uh, multiple functions. So the, the basic idea is that if you want to have multiple function inside across, just pass them inside a list. Um, yes, Amar, you want to add something? No, no, it's, uh, it's okay. I, uh, I understand that. Um, I think uh by providing a list you, you are like making it easier for if you have like multiple metrics uh mm -hmm. to calculate over like um, multiple columns 100 columns or so yeah so maybe that set will be wider than just two or three four columns mm -hmm. so you have, to, uh, have some kind of a way to not repeat yourself um mm -hmm. um more than twice like mm -hmm. the uh, like I said in the book. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, very good uh, uh, functionality. And yeah. I think it's it, it's doing for loop behind the scene in the cross. Yeah, cross. exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just not that for verbose for a programmer, uh, because exactly. we're programming, uh, for a programmer, we, we already know that the for loop, the while loop, um, this is uh, obvious for us. Uh, so it's just to make it easier for non for non programming data scientists for data yeah. scientists. Yes, uh, they just come come up with this. Uh, yeah. uh, kind of I always I always see that R is more easier for data scientists than Python. Like with this tidy with this tidy bus, a lot of things you know they are wrapped in. They just you know use them you know off the shelves. Yeah, but still because of this, they adding a lot of functionality or abstraction on top of the uh, the core functionality of R. They mm -hmm. creating some kind of um, delay and performance issues. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you can you can see articles of, uh, comparing the plier stuff with the data table, like yeah, yeah. how how each of them are treat uh, are consuming memory, CPUs, yeah. and all. Yeah. Stuff, uh, which is kind of interesting uh, it, it, because if you are providing a lot of abstraction or make it easier, this could have a cost. Yeah. Uh, and the cost is just performance. So it, if you are okay, or if you're okay with that, you, you can use it. So it's, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, so let's go on. Column name. So, but what, what, what thing we can see is that uh, here we have median, we have end means. Um, it means that uh, when you create that, um, those column names will be automatically by this, right? But if you look at this, um, you know, the across, it has something names. So you can provide the names you want for what you want. So you can see the result of across is named across to the specification provided in the, the names argument we could specify. So uh, that means we can create our own names. So if you look at this one, there's something that, Bob, we have name, median, but we have these dot names, right? So we said dot fn and dot column. So what this means is that if we run this guy, you can see here we have um you know the uh, um the column name, the function name, and then column name, right? Yeah, they're combining the, the two of them uh, yeah. by the expression. It's just like um replace uh, the function name uh, underscore the column yeah. name. The every column. one of them exactly yeah. yeah because if you look at this one here um if you look at this one here um we have a median we have a and mix right um a medium is the column name right um a is column name but here we have put the function and function right function are there but 
if you look at this one function comes first, they just put media enemies and they put the column AA, something like that. So it just that you can define what you want. Um, but also you can do other, if you like, instead of create a new column, you can use the name argument to give the output new names. So you can see, you can give a new name. So here you can see um, this one absolute. Um, this is also another anonymous function. Then here, another names, um, which give the column on something else, you know, absolute, uh, you know, uh, this is it, um, absolute value. Yeah, so do you know why they put this dot, uh, dot column, dot call, dot call? Like, uh, why didn't they put that just um, call? Um, I think because to try, like, behind the scene, the function takes this argument and uh, try to replace uh, its own value, uh, the column value inside this bracket. So the yeah, bracket has uh, special um, characters. Uh, and dot uh, to 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 uh, like uh, refer to the column name whatever it, it is not just because if you say the call it be if you say that's call you're saying it's um, name the name of the column is call not replace it with the name of the column now. you see what I mean like if you if you say call just to try it uh, if you say call no, yeah, I know, but it will not work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Just... I don't know if it's. Uh... Yeah, try it with the, with the brackets also. Um... Let's see. Okay. So just add something to it because it, you know. Okay, it's the same, right? Yeah, it's okay. Let me see. It's working. So interesting. No, uh, in, outside the bracket. Underscore bane outside the bracket. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe. Oh no, it's working. Yeah, it's working. Um, oh. And adding, um, but it doesn't like it, it's adding or to it. Like it's not replacing it. Does the other one replacing it? Yeah. Try yeah. dot. Try dot. Yes. Yes. A B. I don't know. Okay, let me try dot now. No, the same one with dot. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's working. So I don't know why it's why dot is this. I thought it's um, it's a notation for for replacing column. Yeah. And existing the argument uh, go up go up our up upper in the scroll up. You see here is dot column dot function. All right. Okay. Right. Okay. Um. So the next one they discuss here is called filtering. So because um because we have now okay we have filtered right and uh, uh here okay what we do here we did here is doing something across all column right you know like selection of columns and do some um, apply some function with some stuff with across but what about um across is a great match for summarize and mutate but it's more how cut is it with filter diff library by right, to if any and if all so if you want to do for filter so across is good for um you know as they said for mutate and summarize and all those stuff so here this one um to filter for filtering we can use if any um, and then, and if all, so these are two options that can replace that. Um, so this is for filtering, um, you know, rows, not column, um, um, that uh, content that row value is NA. So here we can see here we have NA, NA, NA. So if we want to remove this one, um, we want to filter uh, A to D. 
Uh, okay. So I think what they are doing here is uh, they are filtering if A to D is NA, meaning everything is NA, all the columns, right? So we can see here, no, not every column is NA. So um, we we are still working. So if you look at across, it's a great match for summarized. I mean, but it's more awkward to use it with filter. Deploy provide two variant of across. So across is, we know across is working on columns. So if any, and if all also, they are working on columns. Does that make sense, Ahmad? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, they are working with filter better. Um, I think it's uh, because, but why across is not working with, uh, with filtering? Mm -hmm. Because it's filtering working with rows. Because it's row based. Um, so I think um, what is happening is like filter, if any, um, it's mean filter, if any, you know, um, yeah, across, yeah. across is talking about all the column, about the column. So here is a filter, if any, A to D means all the column values, because filter is working uh, along the rows. So it's still something like, it's okay, it will take that this row, this row, this row, this, this row, maybe six rows filter if any of them is any if all the rows in that a to d in that um column is um, any then filter it oh okay yeah i got it now um, yeah doesn't like uh, uh, apply a function right no no th this is a uh, you see what yeah filtering right no this is a function it's any oh, okay so so you can replace it with mean or median or yes 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 yeah. yes. So this so is it with uh, with a function. Yeah, you can see this is it. It's across is that we use this. But if we want to use filter something that uh, across this, then we use if any of these. They are the still the same. It's just variant. They are variant of across, but I use with filter. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. oh. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, now here is another thing. Five volt longer. So they said there is interaction between across and five volt longer, and in many cases. You perform the same calculation by first pivoting the data and then performing the operation. So let's look at an example here. We can see we say summarize across A to D, median apply this function, right? List median, give bring median, mean, bring mean, right? When we do this, um, you can see here we have A median, um, we have A mean, right? And we have B median, something like that. Now, we could compute the same value by pivoting longer and then summarizing. So we already know pivot longer. So here, given the data set, um, let's see the data set here. Okay. So given, looking at the data set here, you can see we have column A, column B, Right, column C, column D, right? So this is the data. Now, looking at this data, um, because we have group A, A uh, one, two, one, two, one, one, right? So we can five bot longer, right? Five bot longer A to D. So when we five bot longer A to D, let's look at. Let me show you what will happen. Look at what happened. How about longer A to D? So you can see before, because we have one, 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 one. So um, for A, it takes one. For B, you know, we make it longer the way. We, now, if we make this longer, because we now have, um, um, uh, we now have this, then we can do something like this. Um, group by names, you can see group by names. So five words longer, then because we have names here, we can group by names. 
then we can summarize ket mean and median. And now just the way we do using the plier. So this is also an alternative. We could compute the same value by Pivotal Langa and um, the similar the way we did this one, we get this, but this is somehow simpler. So you can see it, um, it can give us the something, uh, this one. So this oh, is yeah. Yeah. name, median, I mean. Of ordering. Uh, yeah. If it's longer, right? Is um is the older way, uh, yeah. But if you like very uh, verbose to apply um, multiple stuff at the same time, you use a cross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they give the same um results, but this one you can see it it is in wider something like that. Okay. Right. Now moving on to another one, you can see like um they are doing iteration, but uh. Still, there is no for loop. They just using some functionality. Now, then another interesting one is this: reading multiple files. So, um, now in R, um, we can use you know two functions: map for map. This guy, right? This guy. We can use this guy to you know um read multiple files, right? So this is an Excel file. So you can see them. We read them. Now, the typical thing, which I typically do, <laughs> which is, um, you know, is just to read the files and, you know, call row bind, bind rows to just bind them. So here you can see I bind the data, right? But what about if this one is 1,000 1, files? That doesn't make sense, right? Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. So what I can do? So you can do three things. Number one, <laughs> eh? you see what? We want, we want to loop through it. Yeah, so um, it's him. I, I typically use this and I don't, you know, a lot of time, I, you know, but um, yeah. So we can do this in list the files to list the files in the folder, use map to map everything and use list bind, uh, list R bind to bind them. So let's look at the stuff. So here, for example, um, we just specify list that file, we specify the folder, we specify the pattern, the pattern of the files in the folder. So here you can see the Excel size. And now we, Sorry, is it a regex pattern? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pattern regex. So yeah, anything dot then XLS and that at the end. So it's a regex. So yeah. um, you can see here these are the files. These are the files in it, right? These are the files in it. So that's that's the first thing. Then the next thing is to put these guys in a file, um, because we know these are the fi files, right? So you can put them in a list, you know, and call a files here. Now that we have 12 paths, you can put them. So running this guy, um, we allow, we call this one. And now when we call files, um, you can see, you know, you can see them here, um, multiple data frame, right? You can see them in the data frame. But, but I think you can like, instead of, yeah, you are already defining it, uh, the path by hand here right yeah so that's the that's still this is a problem like using this defining the path by hand um like that's we, what we're gonna do so see next so for example now uh you see um a map is similar to across but instead of doing something to each column in a data frame it does something to each element in a vector oh. each element in a vector that is what map does so we saw across what he's doing is it takes do, do something median why whatsoever in uh, or in our data frame but map what it does is each you know in a vector so for example now we have a list here right we have a list of files right now we can call map on this list to do something to or to bind them so let's look at what will happen now you see here we have our path right and we say read excel so you can see the path, what is our path? If you look at it here, you can see this is a path, right? List of files. Because we have list.files, and now we have our path list of files. So now, can we call map on that list of file and now, you know, to read it, Excel. So you can see map, read Excel, it read it. You see what I mean? All like, you know. It's a part of functional programming. Exactly, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that is a pro. That is a pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is co-functional programming. <laughs> yeah. 
this map stuff is like the core core um, functional program. So you can see like you just call this map and it map everything, um, you know, the um, across the map this, you know, function, right? If you remember the across, take the function, you know, as still, let's go back um, across given the column, right? Columns and text functions to map on these guys, right? That is what across does. So map what it does given the list of files, um, you know, it maps the function there. So it reads the, all of them, right? And, you know, then lastly, if you look at them here, we have files, right? But each file here, you can see them one, two, three. Now, what can we do? We now need to call list rbind again. So list rbind, we call it on top of all these files that I call here after the map, then that will put them in a single data frame. Mm, interesting. So yeah. they emulate or add append all the file because of the, yeah. the same structure. So yeah. if, we, if one of the file have not having the same structure, it will get an error. Exactly. Because, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, I think so. You look at it. Look at the look at it here in simpler way. Yeah. Yeah. This is you just the path. path. You just this map path. this. Yeah. And now you call R bind. Also, yeah, and I think because across is based on doing the thing with the flyer package mm -hmm. um, on data frame itself, so it has to be data frame, otherwise, we can't use it. But in map, um, we're treating structures, not a data frame, yeah, exactly. So yes, structure or data is a less. Uh, could be any type of data structure that we have in R. Exactly, exactly. We have, we have something a lot of uh, a lot of structures in the, in R. So we can use map in structures on a structural level, uh, and yeah. across we deal with data frame. Um, yeah. Oh. Um. So, I think what the what you are saying, like uh, maybe one file is not in the same structure. Um, it may return. Uh, yes, of course. I think in the book they give even an example. I didn't um, take the examples here, but they give some some kind of example there. Now the next one is data in the path. So sometimes you see like our path path name like here you can see 1952. This is a this is a data that we may take, right? We want to this you know report that this for this year this is what happened. So data in the file name that's what they are saying. Data in the path. Sometimes the name of the file is the data itself. In this example, the file name contains the year, which is not over, uh, otherwise recorded in the individual file. To get that column into the final data frame, we need to do two things. So we have what we call set names. So set names will take the base name. Uh, you can say set name, base name. So it can take the uh, last one. You can see here, right? X1952 SLS 1962. So it's taking. Um. Yeah, it's taking the base name, but where where it's assigned the base name or it's assigning uh, what by you... like where it's say base name is equal to that. Or this is like defined by R. Okay, yeah, the... yeah. Let me show you. Um set names. Oh no, no, set names. Uh set names. So try try just printing base name mm -hmm. and see. Yeah, yeah. So look at it. Um, yeah. base, it's a function from base R. So um, if we have base name path, look at what we have directory path. So base name remove all the files up to the end and including the last path separator if any. Yeah, so, so it's yeah. the, the recognized in the path itself. So you, exactly, uh, by default, it's uh, assigning it to the last part of uh, exactly. Of the yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, if you look at this and yeah, okay, look at this an example. Um, okay, they didn't provide that. Anyway, so this one um basically we are taking the path. And now we are taking saying that each file in that path set its name to the base name. 
right? So the base name here, you see, this is it. So it's so it, this is it. Now, what they are saying is that we can do that now. Um, this is same similar to what we did above this so stuff. So we can say set name, base name, a map, a read Excel file list by um, names to year. And now, you know, mutate year equals to pass number. So this is the same um, what we did here, but they want to create like another column called year. So here, pass number, because the year it's in, not in, is uh, in, uh, what do you call it, is string. So pass number, it, it is in quote like 952. So it will now pass this one to a number, uh, number. So that's what we have here. So, yeah. Okay, so finally, um, save your work. We already know um, how we can save our work. After that, we call write CSV to save our work. Um, yes. You wanna add something, Ahmad? Uh, no, no, uh, it's good. Oh. Uh, good, good to note uh, that um, they've provided functionality for for our data data science toolkit in R uh, is very uh, very very verbose and have a lot of. Uh, um, I forgot very, we didn't we didn't start uh, start right start. <laughs> what? We didn't write start at the beginning. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't know how how to, how to go from here. Um. No, no, no. I just tell um. I don't, I will tell him that uh, we forgot today to type this start. The thing is, I think it can do. You need to do it manually. Yeah. I totally forgot also that. <laughs> all right so many simple iterations so um okay so this is in in um you know um interesting stuff as well so what he's saying here and you you are you know everyone that does programming know this um you know you write a function and call the function to work on the, some stuff so what he's saying is that uh, for example here okay so for example here you have some um some files and uh, you want to apply some pre-processing on those files. So what you need to do is to create a function. You can see, for example, we create a function called process file. And now when you read that file, you remove maybe uh, non uh, something that's not any, you lower case anything. And you know, um, do, you know, you just pre-process a file. So what he's saying, like you can now use the map, you know, and call that function to apply to all the files. You know what I mean? And then you can do Arbind, uh, list Arbind. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Um, my... Yeah, so they've got it, yeah. So it's clear. Yeah, so the idea is like create a function that will pre-process the data and everything. And now we, using this map, you can call that function. Uh, uh, this the, These are the files. And now you can call that function that I'll apply on all these. Then you can uh, list bind them. This is the same also uh, steps. Yeah, in different format. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I think this is the way the um, you create packages also. Uh, the same way we could use. Um, I don't know if um, like the common way of doing it using the object orientation style or just doing it with function. Mm. But uh, we will talk about packages. I think right. Yeah. I don't remember the chapter name, chapter number. Yeah, so I think, um, and the last part uh, we have is saving multiple outputs, um, which also um, allow you. So this is what they have last year. This is, I think this part of the chapter is part of the previous version of the book, um, which, we have not used it here, um, you know. So this is what we have, um, Hamad. Um, the last part we have saving to multiple outputs and uh, uh, it's similar to all what we have um, using the map as well. You apply or the apply hmm? is, um, I is see it a lot in code. Which one? Um, 
uh, with the old versions um ah. and yeah yeah you yeah see. Apply and if apply yeah so what what they are doing I yeah think. so um so these are all this is base r's so um this that you see they are base r l apply s apply v apply um they are this kind of uh um the so map replaces all this stuff um mm. yeah so for example we have map make a list so map make a list so you can see here that we use map make a is list. map is, is a bit r or so or in no 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 map is a tidy bus you can see map make a list create a list right so what of because the map is also map logical make a logical vector map integer make integer map double make double map character so the map is of different kind of function what we have seen is map um, that make a list so um yeah so but all these ones uh they are base r this stuff but uh with the map the um it becomes like uh you know it uh replaces them so this is yeah so this is something that you talk about deal um if you have something that are uh, using the map that uh, is not within so these are something uh that dealing with failures designed to work with map result is the original result if there's an error this will be you know something like that so i don't know why why is it move it? Maybe they move it to advanced R, this stuff. But by the way, there is also map two. So map and P map, mapping over multiple arguments. So you see um, what we have map, that one is one algorithm. Function are for multiple related input that you need to iterate along with par in parallel. So you have map two and so this maybe I think they remove it. There is also work, it's an alternative to map that you use when you want to call a function for its side effect rather than then for its own return value. So just for side effect, rather than uh, the function does not return value, but for some side effect. So this is, uh, all of this one, they are in advanced R book, uh, detail, like reduce, accumulate, they are all in advanced R book. So, but mm -hmm. in this, yeah, um, detail in fact, but all this stuff, I think they remove it from this uh, new version. I don't know why. And you can see here that is for loop and functional. So yeah, this is what we are saying. Um, for loops are not important in R, as they are in other programming language because R is a functional programming language. This means that it is possible to put for loops in a function and call that function instead of the using for loop directly. Base R and the power package have function for many loops, it's common loops. Yeah, so, but it's yeah. like. You you are you are putting for four, you're using four in a function. So it's yeah, yeah. You are so why you are not saying um this is how you could write for loops. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you say that it's uh, you will you will you will use it in a function, so you have uh -huh. to first then okay, you mm -hmm. can we are using it only on fun in function. Mm -hmm. So this is how we we could do it. But you didn't yeah. express in the first place. Um, yeah, I, I think I, they should do. They should do because, like, I don't think like iteration chapter that they exclude for. They should touch it, but there is no any for there. They should like maybe at the end, maybe I guess like you know all these thing you have seen. They can be, they are used with uh, the back end. They are using for, and you can implement something like that if you want. Are interested, you can read more. But they didn't talk anything about that. You can see yeah. before there was a while loop. You know all those for. Oh, I forgot this. Like you know, for i in in sequence, all this one they are in the old version. Set along, yeah. All right. Uh, so are all of them are like from base R. No, 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 no. no. All of this one they are in tidy bus. All of them are in tidy. Even the even the sequence along. Yes, 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 yes. Even this one. Yeah. So it's older in the, in. Um, huh? So it's all in uh, tidyverse itself. Yeah. So or maybe they remove them, but is um um yeah. So the thing is the seek along is like um you know if you want to go for loop like we in in Python we say like for i in we say like you know three something like this right? Yeah. So but this one they said for i in seek along means like. A sequence it goes like in you know all the stuff and you know yeah yeah 
And uh, I think for sit along, um, you know, in Python, the last one is not included, right? If you are seeker. So this one, the last one is included. Something like that I forgot in the detail. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I forgot actually. So right, but thank you. Right, because if you're not using it, I think because because it's, um, the book itself is specialized for that science. So it's exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, because the book is, yeah, right. yeah. It does make it makes sense because the book uh, is mainly for the data science people, so they just uh, you know um, assume that uh, it doesn't make uh, much more impact. So maybe if somebody like you know. Uh, is interested can actually um, go to advanced R and work on it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so now what are we gonna do? I, I think we are we are almost done. We have three more chapters to finish. Yeah, and I, I we um who will present the, the next chapter? Uh nobody puts his name. Are you interested? Uh, a field guide to Abyss R. Base R. So I'll yeah. see. Um, I think we can, I can use it. I can uh, handle okay. it. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, um, Ahmad. So thanks for presenting today. Um, uh, it's a very good chapter, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very good one because we uh, iteration is very good stuff. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much for Valentino for the next one. For the next one, Quattro. Um, you know, let's do it for Quattro. Um, I really enjoy it as well. And then after all, um, we dive in into Shiny and you give us uh, a lot of your experience in um, automation, uh, hopefully, inshallah, <laughs> because you finished yeah. that book that uh, you learn a lot about those automation stuff. Yeah, it would be very interesting. I think, and I think it's um, Shiny itself is, uh, is a very unique uh, framework to, to exactly. learn. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Even if you know, uh, you know Python, so I I use Pyshiny in my work. So it's uh, I could give you also um. What oh, are you are using the Python Shiny Shiny version of Python? Yeah, I ah. use it. Really. But they don't have book for that one, right? Yeah, they they still don't. But I think they working on one. Uh, ah. because uh, so a lot of people are uh, demanding this, and I'm like um, like uh. Because I would prefer that if there is that one for Python, I would prefer to go for the Python one. Yeah, but still they are not having any kind of like plans. They they saying okay. They said um, I think hardly I uh, said before that it, uh, they are thinking to write a one, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they even began to write or not. Yeah. Anyway, let's do the R one. I mean. It's easy yeah. to change, to uh, you know move to the um, Python one, yes. and that's why uh, we could use it as a as a reference. Yes, and then compare between the functionality, and I can say my experience in in terms of by shiny and what is difference in R shiny and by shiny. Yeah, uh, it will be good. Uh, yeah, because I want to use it to you know the shiny to for one project that we are doing um, for head speech detection. I want to implement implement like um you know. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, what do you call it? Like, um, like um, uh, a tracker, like using shiny that uh, given anything that you said, something like that. So yeah, with or with Python. Um, so uh, I mean, shiny, the shiny one. I think um, because like as you said, there is no book to learn. I think for me, like maybe I would do with the R. What do you think? Or oh, if the Python is also good, what do you think? Um. If it's like, um, what is the like the the, the model is ter, uh, is written written with? Is it written with R or is it written oh, with Python? Python? Python, Python, Python. I think Python. go with Python all the ways, but because the the Python one is very um, or, or very easy to learn okay. from the documentation side. It's very easy and very uh, attachable to R shiny, so uh -huh. you can it very fast and. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, you could ask me if if or ask I, I could use send you um a Discord channel where okay. my shiny people are asking questions and oh really yeah ah send me send me yes yes good and you will find like a lot um the the core team like Jordan oh. and, um Jay Chang 
oh, or nice. in, in this Discord channel. You can ask them directly if you have any. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, share with me, please, Ahmad. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, since, All right. Uh, go to my channel and you, uh, you could ask me anything if you. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Great. I think I can even start. Um, we can ask. Um, um, uh, uh, um, we can ask. Um, uh, uh, about you know calling for the new shiny book club. Um, you know, um, for John yeah. to start calling. You know, yeah. Take to to gather the gather an interest. Exactly. And exactly. Some people, yeah. other people, that interesting. Yes. 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 Um, I will okay. talk to him like hi and um, we are finishing our shiny and uh, we are interested to have the um you know another shiny book club. Awesome. All right, thank you very much. Um so now I will use stop. <laughs> <laughs>